one of the most famous teen moms, former vice presidential nominee, Sarah Palin's daughter, Bristol Palin, was quoted as saying, abstinence only education is not realistic at all. Abstinence works. Abstinence only education does not. What it does is set our children up for unrealistic expectations about their sexual behavior. I was once a teenager, some 15 odd years ago in high school, being taught abstinence only education and looking around at my peers that were sexually active. As an adult, I have volunteered in many youth serving populations around the community and was surprised to find out that they are being taught the same information that I was taught in high school years ago. What we want to do is provide comprehensive sex ed and make sure that we are providing the best option for our youth as healthy sexual human beings for the future. So today we're going to go over the financial impact, the social drawbacks, and recommendations for the future. So you're probably wondering what exactly is comprehensive sex ed and how does it compare to the abstinence only education that children are receiving now in schools. So abstinence only education is the only 100% effective way to quell teen pregnancy rates and to stop STDs and STIs. However, it is not the most realistic option as teens create about 40% of them say that they are sexually active we want to talk about more realistic goals. Comprehensive sex ed talks about safe sex as an option outside of just no sex. It also talks about LGBTQ studies. As the new generation grows up, they're becoming more aware of their bodies on the inside and out and are identifying in different ways. So the lesbian, gay, bi, transgender, and queer binary is going to be an option. So we want to make sure that the new generation feels safe in their bodies and in the spaces that they occupy. And then lastly, we want to talk about STDs and STIs, including HIV. Just now in Ohio, we're having a syphilis outbreak because a lot of people are choosing not to go for the comprehensive STD and STI testing. In order to test for syphilis, you have to have a blood draw. In addition to actually having just a mouth swab or a genital swab. So a lot of people are going without that and syphilis is un undetectable outside. So we're having climbing rates of syphilis, which is actually at outbreak status at this moment. So what can we do to quell these options? Well, first we wanna talk about the financial impact that social and abstinence only education has. So yearly, we're spending about $176 million on abstinence-only education in schools. In addition to that, we're spending about $92.9 million with faith-based organizations and nonprofit organizations that teach abstinence-only education outside of schools. That money can be used for a greater positive social impact in our communities outside of just shoveling money into something that kids are going to do anyway. So next we want to look at the positive, the negative social impact and the positive ways that we can turn it around. So currently risky sexual behavior is what teens are more active in because they don't know what they don't know. As a teenager, you feel almost invincible. So if someone's telling you that essentially there are no consequences for your actions because they're not talking about your actions, you feel as though you can do pretty much anything. Even though right now, teen pregnancy rates are on the decline, and that's because comprehensive sex ed is more widespread. Out of the 50 states, including the District of Columbia, only 24 of those states require that sex ed is topped and out of 19 of those 24 states, it's abstinence only education that's being taught. And that's of 2010. We're working on changing those numbers as of right now. However, in the areas where abstinence only education is being taught, teen pregnancy rates are actually on the rise. And as those teen pregnancy rates rise, so does the federal rates and money that are brought into those areas, such as SNAP benefits, TANF, and Medicaid. So we're looking at a negative social impact as well as a financial social impact. So what can we do to change these things around? What are the recommendations 
for the future. First, we want to get behind the youth and empower them. We want to have some sort of activism towards creating a positive social sexual change. So what can we do to do that? We can volunteer at your local clinic. You can volunteer at your local high schools and your after school programs as well to make sure that we're teaching the youth the information that we know and the correct information. In addition to that, we wanna make sure that we're trying to be as comprehensive as possible and teach them the broad spectrum of being a healthy sexual being. In conclusion, we wanna provide the youth with the best option. We wanna save the government money, and while doing that, that will create a more positive social impact. And with these next steps, we can create more healthy and sexually liberated beings for the future because without that, when we fail our youth, we fail our future.